Hey there, this is a rather tentative video of um, what I'm up to at the moment. Um, uh, I say tentative because I, I, I don't, I think blaming it on the sort of the winter coming on and that, I don't feel I have so much the energy for all um, uh, the videoing and, and all that kind of thing. But I thought I'd, maybe I can share this. So yeah, and also, case in point is that I'm. I'm still working towards um, Wellington's victory, the full thing, you know, the whole game, which would cover um, most of my kind of six foot, well, two thirds of my six foot table that I have here, table top. Um, but I, uh, I'm not kind of like um, into it at the moment. I'm still working towards it. I, it's definitely there, but I, I'm trying to find the kind of like the headspace to get into it. And at the moment, I'm just enjoying lots of shorter types of games, which you've seen a few videos of. And uh, like, um, I'm a member on of a Facebook group for ATS, the um, Advanced to Brock uh, Game System. And uh, I I just joined their Facebook group because probably because I played a bit of ATS. Um, fairly recently I put some videos up on it and um, so I just joined the group out of curiosity it's quite a new group and uh, and um, there have been some to and fro in that I, I'm, I'm still at mixed kind of feelings about ATS because I quite like it as a system but I don't really like the activation system so I, I use a, a modified rule a variant rule um, that's a bit more I go you go because especially for tactical combat Say if you've got 20 squads, 10 each side, and you activate one side, one squad or stack, and another squad, so 10 stacks or squads each side, then the other side activates. You have 20 activations, and that's what, 18 or something swappings from side to side in one turn. And um, apart from the fact that as a solo player, it's really kind of tiring, sort of changing hats like that all the time. Even as a solo player, and I have played it face to face. I didn't really enjoy the fact that I couldn't kind of see a plan developing. I felt like I was always re reacting, responding, because I do a little thing, he does a little thing. Maybe I respond to that little thing or, or I do another little thing. And so I'm sure the more play of it, I could kind of like formulate a plan and progress it without getting sidetracked and responding to his little things and so forth. But I found it difficult. I actually prefer the ASL. I go, you go. And uh, I put, and I've got a whole chest of ASL down here, um, which I've been into for many years, but I haven't played for many years because um, there is a bit of overhead. And uh, somebody had given me the ASL starter kit number one uh, as a present m many years ago now, and, and because I had the starter kit three, um, which I played a little bit of, I never sort of got this one out, and I just on the ATS Facebook page there was a discussion about oh you know which is why do you play ATS instead of ASL if you play both and I said well actually you know like just, I like ASL so I'll play it for different reasons and it made me think oh I'd be missing that because this starter kit is great it's like vanilla ASL in that everything's stripped down to the bone it's just the bare basics uncomplicated you've basically got an 11 page rule book yes there's uh, three columns of rules per per page and a fair bit of text but you know relatively it's not a heavy rule set um and especially when you're coming from some experience of full asl even a asl starter kit three with the vehicles all of that taken out it is so easy to get into and plus you have short scenarios so like I just played a scenario on this um, map sheet alone and essentially it was the Russians were holding these three multi-hex buildings and um, the Germans uh, with elite engineer squads, elite squads with flamethrower, two demolition charge crews had to come across and take those three buildings and they just managed it la on the last turn it was great it was a fantastic game and although there's certain things like I was rolling double ones which in full ASL will be um, what's called heat of battle so then you do another roll and certain extra exciting things can happen like maybe heroes are created or 
that squad becomes extra bold, etc. Um, although that was missing because it's just vanilla ASL. Um, it was still a great game and it was really fast. It essentially was like half an hour, I would say, per turn. And that's for both sides. And so I played a six turn game. So it's I did it in about three hours, which was two evenings worth or um, a bit of an afternoon and an evening. It was fantastic. And um, so I'm gonna, I decided I'm going to progress on. So I, that, that was ASL Scenario S2. I've forgotten the name and it's on the back of this. So, so I'm not going to turn this because I got part of the setup. Um, so I'm on to now ASL Scenario S3. It's called Simple Equation. It's based in Aachen, Germany, 12th of October. So it's a historic... Um, site of the First Reich, so it's got extra special value to the Germans, and you have some tough German defenders, it says in the scenario description. But on the other hand, what we do actually have is we have seven second line squads and five conscript squads, three average ish leaders, a heavy machine gun, and three light machine guns. And then we've got 14 American squads to come on, so I have yet to collect them. I just thought, and uh, the terrain is actually this, so. Um, is that the right way round? Um, so this is a full map board and they're geomorphic. So I swap, swap it that way and you see you can fold it and you get a nice small footprint. I've got these handy players aids. These are actually full ASL players aids, but you know, I can, you just have to leave some bits out. I just printed out a starter kit one summary, which is going to help me, although I, that, I only needed to check the rule book here and there. Um, and uh, yeah, so this is the game. So essentially, these Germans are going to set up here on this, uh, on this board amongst these buildings and then these four buildings here. So from here and back, the Americans are going to set up from this line and back. So they're obviously going this way and they're victory conditions, the Americans win immediately if they control less, greater than or equal to 25 building hexes on this map board. So nothing counts here for victory. You're not trying to destroy the enemy, although often, you know, you want to destroy the enemy to get your territory, and they need 25 building hexes. Now in full ASL, some of these buildings would be multi-level, and I think that even happens in Starter Kit 3, but not in this, so I don't have to worry about that. So, so, for example, that's 3, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. So half a board is 24 and a little bit more, so they need 25. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. Oh yeah, so more or less half of, of, of that board is what the Americans are after. And you can see that's going to be quite tough because uh, one thing, it, ASL is always a race against time. So the, the scenarios are constructed so that the time limit is just enough generally to get what you need. If you, if you have time left at the end and you've achieved the objectives, A, the other player still has some time to take them from you, or B, um, you've done exceedingly well. Um, so, in, for example, in my last game, as I said, we had, um, the Germans had control of this building, they had just gained control of that building, they had control of that building some time ago, and, um, and then the Russians, what did they do, they had, they, yeah, the Germans had exited that building, to concentrate, they needed all their forces to concentrate on taking here, and they had a few broken squads here. Sorry, they had a Germans had a squad or something here, and the Russians had some, a broken unit here, and so the Russians had the last turn. So though the Germans gained this, so they had that. Although the, there was two broken units in there, and they had that, the Russian guy because that one managed to rally at the beginning of his turn, it had a chance to move in here. And if it had been able to defeat those two units in close combat or fire, then it would have picked it, you see, because it wasn't sort of left garrisoned. But, you know, what I'm illustrating is you cannot ever um, relax when you're playing ASL.
you can't say, oh, I got that building, we can leave it out, because there's somebody can always do, you know, something can happen, and those units had not, I had not accounted them, so there was, it was a bit of a risky proposition. Um, so what I tried to illustrate that with this is that the Americans have to control the building, so you, you only have to pass through it with a good order unit and for no enemy unit to be there to control it. But, you know, if they sort of sweeping through, they have to make sure that they don't let any last minute Germans come round behind them. So I think this is going to be an interesting fight. I'm going to set up now. So we've got three factors um, to think about first on setup, which is we've got heavy machine gun and three light machine guns. Now they can, um, especially the heavy machine gun, that can often fire twice or even more in a turn. So you want it where it can cut through lines of advance. And again, with the light machine guns, not so much. They're more to sort of bolster normal um, squad firepower but they have a long range so again you can use them to cut the lines of advance so they the, the first thought really is that by sighting these so that they can cover any open ground or lightly covered ground that the Americans are going to have to cross then we've got the leaders we have to think about the leaders there's only one that can add on attacks the others are really mainly just useful for rallying units. So we've got three which we'll probably put behind. This one maybe, for example, often will make sense to put him with a heavy machine gun so that that's going to be a devastating attack. But we might want it to bolster another line of defence. and sort of. So we've got two sort of major cornerstones. And then we've got our second line squads and our conscript squads. So my two questions there are, do I use the conscript squads as a first line of defence? So they're kind of like, you know, the thin crust, and then we bolster with the stronger forces behind. So these are kind of like more of a speed bump, which is always useful in the SF, as I talked about that tight time factor. Or do I use them as a reserve? Um, they're not so useful as a reserve because their lower morale means they're, they're more likely to get stopped as they move around. So it, so it might be more likely to sort of intersperse them amongst our others. Um, the other thing is, is we need to, because there's a lot of terrain to defend, and we won't be able to defend all of it, unless, like here we have an obvious point, is that we have, say we have a machine gun here and a machine gun there, then we can cover all that open ground, all that open ground. Here. And the Americans have to get and the open ground just a little bit in front. The Americans will have to go through that to get past us. They do have smoke exponents of three, which means they have a 50% chance of laying smoke um, before they move, which is going to help them crossing open ground, which would suggest that then they, rather than try to run across here, they would actually try to cross here and assault there so maybe I don't want my most powerful machine gun to be there because it's going to be an immediate target and could get taken out early. Um, okay so I think I'm going to do a bit more counting of the buildings and to see what is the minimum number that I need to keep from the Americans and build my defence around that. Okay, so a quick analysis of the ground. I, I just drew a quick... So this is the road net on, on this map. And we can see that there's 16 hexes of buildings here, plus one here. So that's kind of like separated. The road net's important because that kind of puts clear spaces, which conveniently separates these into bundles. So there's not one there, 16 there. Then 7, 8, 9, 5, 4. But what that says is that these, this bunch together gives 22. So the Germans, if they take all of these, they get 22. Then they could take, say, these three, or perhaps three here, or, or three there, whichever is most convenient for them. So um, I could let them have all of that and then protect everything else. What would probably be better would be to say, let them have this 
and protect across here. So we could give them 16 or 17 and then make them fight for all the rest. Now that's useful because then it means, my well I don't know, it's still quite a big line. It's, I might as well just cut all of it off, isn't it? It's hard to say. It's really difficult. This is a great thing as well about SLs, you know, this tactical planning. Do I set up forward or back? Some forward, some back. I would rather not split my forces. And I think what I'm going to do is let them take those 16. If so, I set up a heavy machine gun here, then that will cover all the way along here. So that will cut off all of these. And then if I set up heavy forces around here, that will cut off all of these. And I the, the danger then is if, if it, you don't have concealment in so in vanilla ASL. And I don't so I can't hide my forces. So I need to set up some here or else the Americans might set up all those here and just move across there. If so, it would take them quite a while to get through the woods, so then I would have time, if I'm set up here, I would have time to shift. So I think that's what I'm going to do is set up like this with a basic plan of trying to bottle the attacker in here. And I'll set up some um, speed bumps there, some conscripts there just to slow him down and cause him problems crossing this open terrain. You know, slow him down, make him think a bit about it. So this is the setup. Tell you what, I'm gonna change this to another um another recording with a, a light on it.